So at the heart of Pramapasha, we have a message. It's about caring for people and caring for the earth and uh, sharing uh, resources in a fair way. Um, and everything that we do in Pramapasha has to um, take into consideration at least one of these ethics and, and um, better if it takes in all the three at the same time, if you can manage to do that. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just So, the primary goals of Kamakasha, everybody, um, I think, interprets it a little bit different along, uh, depending on how their life situation is and what the primary focus is, but um, for me, it's very much about living a healthy and meaningful and fruitful life according to my nature. And what that is, it's, it's developing all the time, but it certainly has something to do with um, getting more grounded and being more in nature and learning from nature and um, connecting myself and more to the soil and the plants and the, everything that, that goes on. Um, here we are in a very urban environment, so it can be a little bit difficult to, to connect, but um, I Systems. And in Roman culture, since we have to live from it also, we need to um, harvest something and live, um, then it will be about creating edible ecosystems. And for that, um, there is a, a concept called the forest garden. And then we are um, very concerned about sustainability in general, so more socially. If if it doesn't work properly, you can all the other things that we can do for pain. And of course, we care about the environment and, and the economy because we do live in a, in a world that has um, activities or based on the economy, so we kind of have to uh, manage that at the moment as well. So, the difference between permaculture and, say, organic farming, for example, is that uh, permaculture is very much about design and it takes in um, many, many different things. Uh, actually, you can design your whole life around permaculture. And uh, that means how you get your energy, how you get your transportation, your housing, um, uh, food, of course, and many, many things. Um, so, so this, the design is at the core of it. Uh, it's very much about working with flow of energy materials, so we try to close the cycles of energy and, and uh, nutrients, for example, we talk about um, food. Um, so if we buy something or we grow something, we, there is um, some waste products from that, we try to design that into growing more vegetables and so on. The design also has to encompass ethics and then um, there's a long list of different principles that we use in permaculture. Um, I will mention some of them today. I can't go through all of them, but I will mention some of them. Um, um, if we have a piece of land, it's also about how to defend the land where it goes where we talk about songs. So the house is some zero, and that's where you are generating most of the time. And then there's some one, which is just outside the kitchen door, where you want to have a lot of plants that you use, or things that you use uh, every day, and you have to take care of. So it could be the herbs, like the herbs kind of what you're going to do. If you have a uh, house with a garden, um, the best place to, to put or maybe a bit on the path where you can walk every day and come home from work or something. Just have the things that you use every day and break them. That's easy. And, and then um, the design also has to um, encompass how we, we work. Like, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, and that also goes for itself, but also goes for uh, animals, for example. If we have animals 
in the system, like worms, um, that can help us decompose our kitchen structures, for example, to be reused for compost and um, for if we have crops, they could be used to create a gravel soil, some, something that really is difficult to, to dig up um, if you put in goats, then they could do dairy or chickens that are scraping the soil and they can take any pests as well. So we, we work with the animals at this to, to help them thrive and to do their thing and at the same time do the work that we want to do. So it's very much about the input and, and the output thing. Every time we want um, to put something in and there's an output and if, if it's waste then it's any more work. So we want to close the cycles as much as possible to just work with nature to say everything that happens and then recycle it and thereby create less work. Questions? Yeah, you see the usual material and the spices are close to your house. Yeah. Isn't it good that three or four circles? You have the first circle, the second, yeah. and then the, the last is the forest, is the heavy circles. Yeah, yeah. We actually uh, work with up to seven zones, you might say. So zero zero is yourself. So you also have to take care of yourself and your good health and make sure you get the right nutrition. So um, zero, zero, zero. It's the house, then some one, the most useful functions. So two, you play something which you maybe only use a couple of times per week or something. Um, so three, the less used functions, so four, so fire is usually uh, for wilderness, so then we want to have uh, a lot of fire diversity. Um, maybe we want to go foraging a little bit to get some birds or something in that area that we really don't touch too much. And so on six is a new uh, concept of kind of, um, we talk about the global commons, so that could actually be some areas that are not owned by anybody, like the seas or the jungle. Or which we also have to make sure um, do the functions that we uh, want, like producing oxygen and so on. Yeah. How much indoor uh, plants are you? It's like the not ships, so there's owner houses, or how much? In the ships, you have a lot of uh, things inside also. Yeah. The, all the houses for the plants. So yeah. 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 In the water, so. It depends totally on what your options, what your possibilities are. I mean, if you live in Copenhagen and have a small apartment, you can have stuff growing in your, in your windowsill and something. Uh, maybe you have a little backyard where you can do something on a roof or terrace. Or you can go to the park and do some gorilla guys and get some seeds. Yeah. If you have a, have a farm, then that's all you can If you want to establish yourself in a new land, build something new, you can build a nursery. You can get a land permission for that. Which kind of product do you suggest for the For an airship in No, for the agriculture. Well, the compost for the yeah. truck, because then you can recycle the nutrients and energy. But um, it can be a little bit tricky, especially in cities. Um, but I, I had to ask this before, I was doing some convenience, highway buildings with uh, compost for this. Okay. So I think it's just a matter of ingenuity and creativity to actually make things like that work. Yeah. And then we don't have to clean our drinking water. You can do this with water plus salt. Yeah. You can do this way with the black water system. Yeah. Throw it down this and the eggs. Yeah, exactly. We have the green beds where the water is filled with water and it comes out. Very clean. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can but in, in Denmark and around the world, it can be very difficult to get the permission to do these kind of things. So that's kind of the thing about the world. And so, what's the first thing? It's a. Uh, maybe you should turn. That's a. It's a guy called Mike Reynolds from California that invented the idea. It's a. Uh, the whole principle about the other ship is like a bathroom. And it's. You have. Um, she always, the window should always go to the south because then you have most of the sun. Right? Mm -hmm. And then um, at the end of the walls, the 
this is then a bit wrong because it takes the, 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 the energy more energy and it keeps more energy in the building. And uh, the idea is, is uh, that the first wall should be in really high density, like slow wall or something really far. And then after you have this kind of isolated material that, that, don't, uh, the, that the energy can transport to the building. So the point is that the, this is one of the things that we can so the sun hits up the building, you see something cool in the back, and in the night the wall comes to the, the house wall. And of course it's not enough, but you have solar panels, and you also have, a, you can have this kind of composting, you can have this other water system, you can have grey water and black water system. The grey water is the, the, the water that you use to wash the dishes and stuff. This is, yeah, I can, I can talk about it for hours, but this is the lower <laughs> Yeah. This is the base. You can, you can have a little bit the same effect if you have a house or your apartment and you can put a greenhouse on the side of it. Then you have like, the greenhouse effect. So I would think that the sound comes through, the energy comes through, heats up the wall behind. Um, I want to hear, um, talk about um, some of the principles. Um, and especially when you talk about food, uh, sorry for my spelling mistakes, I translated it from Danish to English. Um, yeah. So, um, one of the principles of culture is that you have one function, which is eating or, or getting food. Um, then it should be supported by several different elements. Um, so, for example, you can have food from the supermarket or the local market, but you can also have fish and garlic animals or perennial plants. Um, you can get wild food or you can have animals that um, you So you have um, not only one source of something that is essential to you, it could also be about energy or about water. You have water from the roofs or um, maybe have uh, water from the pond or something. Um, and, and energy, for example, for heating the, the house, you can use wood or electricity you know, from solar panels or from the windmill, or you, know, you can have passive solar uh, energy, you um, mentioned. So, now many different ways of supporting one function. Um, and also, the other way around, one element can serve. Um, several functions. So if we take the uh, case of perennial plants, you use them for food. So perennial could be um, your, um, your trees, uh, tree crops, whatever, or not in the city. But you can have, uh, if, you, if you have a piece of land, you can use it. Um, so the, the perennial plants are plants that stay. That means that uh, they can help to improve your soil and they can be good for the insects, bees and so on about in your area. Um, they can be decoration, that's also a function. Um, and then maybe you can get fuel from it from them. Um, you can serve as medicine or materials for handicraft or something and of course um, so you can have different functions from we started with the perennial plants. Um, it's uh, great, you can work in, in cycles and, and see uh, what inputs do the perennials need and what are the outputs. So, one of the outputs is that the uh, perennial plants would be used for food, for example. And uh, that means you can work, you have energy, you have to use heat, you all these things, and there's some ways to do that. The kitchen scraps, then you can use this compost that goes onto your waste beds with one of your apple trees uh, and go back into the food and then you have a cycle. Yeah, we can talk about compost soil, it's also <laughs> not very easy in the city environment. But in the uh, part where you can do some of these, you have like a wormery, like, um, it's fairly easy to do. You have two. two uh, storage boxes, you drill holes in one of them so that air comes inside, puts it inside the other one so there's a gap at the bottom, 
definitely um, put worms in your, your kitchen waste, the ones who work on it, um, get air from, from the holes, and then there will be a liquid that comes out, you can use that for your plants. And, um, and it won't, won't be sticky because it will be aerobic. So if it gets anaerobic and there's no oxygen, then it starts to smell a lot. But um, when it's still uh, aerobic, there's lots of oxygen, then it's, it's, it's okay. You can maybe not be in your living room, but in the kitchen. Is it cold both on the sides and the bottom? Or? Yeah, and the top, and yeah, the bottom, so the liquid can come out and the sides, and, this, and especially in the top. Yeah. <laughs> um, then another principle is that we uh, like to take small steps, and how is the lowest paying fruits first? That which is easy, um, because there's no use in engaging in a huge project and then. You can't do it anyway, just uh, start by your kitchen door, by your back door, or in your window so you do what you can do. And then if you um, then you learn, you learn the lessons for that year, and then you sort of move on from there. Um, so, <coughs> but we can maybe some easy plants. I don't know how you can do it, you have um, plants in your home. Not right now. Huh? Not right now. Not right now. Yeah. But then you're always already used to working with plants and stuff. Oh no! Um, <coughs> water harvesting is it's quite easy to do in many places. You can get one of these um, ahead of time. I'm not sure how to translate that to English. It's one of those one have one ton or something inside. Um, it's usually used for maybe juice or something else in um, around EU or something. And, and sometimes they sell them really cheap, but you can get them for free. Of course, you can go to your local plant store and buy one of those um, sacks of water. And so, what do you use them for? For housing water. So, for example, from your, from your roof. Instead of leading the water into the sewers, it's going to be wasted. So you divert it into your, your big barrel, your water tank, and then you can use it for water in your plants. <coughs> yeah, or you can, uh, you can use it in your toilet. As long as you need to buy water for the
Um, a few more is uh, um, using natural materials and, and processes. So, um, you can use the use of chemically produced whatever uh, materials. And, and for example, if you use uh, tools, I think it's very nice to uh, if you can make your own tools uh, instead of plastic things in China. You can make it, you can also repair it, and then you always know how to, to use that tool. So, um, use um, what you can find in the environment. And processes, yeah, we, we work with composting and we work with um, letting nature do what it does best. And let it support us that way instead of. Doing all sorts of artificial, crazy things. Yeah. And how does it feel? We live in a world where we don't live in this era. So we also have to live and, and get something from it. Um, and yours can be many different things. It can be the beauty of it, but it can also be food for our stomachs or uh, money for me. Okay, um, I want to stop here because um, I think we should go out and get our hands on it a little bit. Um, there's some, um, I'm not quite doing it, but there's a website, can you read it? So, yeah, if you want to know more. Um, and also, uh, the bottom one, um, this is a friend of mine, and they do awesome things. Yeah, okay. So just to give you an idea of what we are going to do today. Um, some um first parts of work. So this is yeah, this is basically what we're aiming for, something along those lines. So you can see they're quite different. But they all have the same idea that um, they're about two meters wide or so. That means you can you can reach in and grab uh, the herbs with easy reach, with easy reach. and uh, they all build up um, so that um, one side is facing north and uh, the other side is facing south. If you get more sun, um, the bottom is generally Better because um, when you water it, it will be more wet at the bottom. The top will have more drainage, so the plants on top should be some plants that are uh, that can that are good in uh, high a lot of sun and and dry conditions. So um, the, the principle of the of the spiral is then to create a lot of different environments for very uh, a, vari a variation of uh, herbs. So if you if you just put a strip of, of soil and you could you could pick some plants, but then it will be good for just a few plants. But when you curl it up like this, you create more different um, conditions. So you can actually have more different herbs that will thrive. So you can have mint root, for example, which is um, uh, requires a lot of, of moisture in the soil. Just next to um, rosemary, which requires dry, so mm -hmm. that way. Um, this is this is an advanced wormery I was talking about before. Um, if you don't have space for a whole, um, if you want to do this at home, that is, uh, you can do it in your in your back garden maybe. Um, but if you don't have that space, this is a, a different option where you just have big pot and smaller pot and the top pot here you get the same effect as the first spiral but maybe you can fit that into a, a, a terrace or something. Yeah. Okay. This is the principal design of the first spiral. So you can see how um, we're going to the pond. This, this is supposed to be a pond. If, if there was soil we were digging into, then we could do it because we are actually on top of plastic out here and, uh, and gravel. 
主场踢的话，就是说，呃，希望这个，然后，你大家，呃，呃，那个，呃，就是我们现在那个，呃，是，啊，不过，嗯，你看那个上上舞。Some old decaying wood, because wood is really good at absorbing moisture and and also nutrients. <laughs> so that can be released over some time, over yeah, the nutrients over some some years maybe, and water when it's when it's needed. So we can put in some bits of wood and so on. Um, and then also some um, seaweed. Because I live on an island, so there's lots of seaweed. Um, and the idea of that is to think of well, we put a lot of nutrients on the land to grow vegetables and so on. They are uh, leached out of the soil and end up in the sea and to feed the seaweed. And then well, if we pick up some seaweed and kind of bring it on to the land again, it goes through the cycle of nutrients that way. So they go up in the ocean and yeah. And the nutrient the, the seaweed is really good as well. And then we have some soil which is not fantastic, which has been here for a while, but we will, we will use that. Um, and then we picked up some compost from um, the container recycling station over here today. <laughs> and uh, there's some, bought, um, you know, bought some really nice compost as well for the top there. And, and then we picked some stones also from the recycling station and I want to thank the very good man who helped us drive them over here because I was a little wheelbarrow when they passed on, so that was a little cool. But uh, we've got the stones and uh, they're not the prettiest, but um, hey, that's what we can get. Yeah, um, maybe near here, just uh, five minutes that way from there. Do you have questions about the, the design? Because uh, in two minutes we'll go outside and try to make one of these. Um, yeah. The uh, bones or the uh, beginning of the spiral, it should be at the south or north or it doesn't matter. The, the beginning towards the north, so you this have the, north? the lowest point towards the north. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're going to have soil and all of that on the top of that green. It would be stone or something like that. It's on that. We'll have soils where the whole thing there. But, um, yeah, that's the idea. Like, let's see how much soil we've got. <laughs> so we're using the technique of having like a layer further below where stones and stuff and regulating the water. Yeah, we could do. So that it doesn't compact. 